Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Um, just making sure I'm not getting the millennial pause at the beginning there, trying not to. Uh, sorry for the delay here for anybody who is in the uh, the chat waiting for this session to kick off. Uh, of course, we just had a couple little tech issues leading into it. So uh, nothing that we couldn't fix in a, in a minute or two, but we are ready to go now. So uh, welcome officially to uh, today's um, gaming info session, uh, how to fast track your career in the gaming industry. Um, I am going to uh, start the actual presentation in just a minute, but before I do, um, I will just familiarize everybody with the platform here. So uh, on the bottom right corner, there is a chat log. Uh, you're welcome to uh, communicate with each other. You can connect with us. Uh, we have some of our team members on the back end here are going to be chatting in the, in the chat there. Uh, perfect, I can see some people posting. We've also got the, uh, the questions tab down at the bottom there as well. So if you have any questions for myself, um, for the company, uh, or for the uh, guest speaker that we have, Leo, today, uh, just throw them into the questions tab. And uh, I promise uh, we're not we're not ignoring them uh, all the way through. We, we will uh, get to them at the end of the presentation and do a little bit of a live Q&A with this, the, uh, the speaker, Leo. So uh, feel free to put them in there. And if we don't answer right away, just know that we will be getting to it a little bit later in the session. Um, we also have a polls tab here. Um, I am going to put a couple polls in in just a moment here. Um, and anyways, when I do that, uh, you guys will be able to uh, interact with the polls throughout the presentation. Uh, feel free to fill those out. And then just the people, you can see all the people who are attending um, one more to the left there. So um, before I officially kick it off, I can invite everyone to share where they are joining us from. I am personally from, um, well, originally from Niagara Falls. I've lived in British Columbia and I now live in Calgary, Alberta. I've lived in three provinces, uh, New York, amazing. Hello, hello. Let's see where we've got Austin, Texas, Surrey, BC, Kamloops, BC, Japan, amazing. More BCs, Peru, Burnaby, Vancouver. Lots of these places I've been and lots I haven't. I've have not been to Peru. Um, I have been to Vancouver. I've not been to Japan. I have been to Kamloops. A little bit of a trend there of me going to all of the Canadian locations. I haven't traveled that far outside of Canada, unfortunately. Okotoks, nice. Edmonton, Medicine Hat, amazing. Well, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining this session. Um, I did just add one of the polls in uh, to the, uh, the polls tab there, and I'm just going to add another one in um, as well. So those should be ready to go. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick off the presentation. So let's get this queued up here. There we go. So I'll start off by introducing myself. Uh, so my name is Tyler. I work at Circuit Stream. I've been with this company for about three years, uh, just coming up on my three year anniversary very soon. I always joke and say, I actually can't remember what it is. I, th I think it's in June. So it's got to be coming up soon. Um, we will have a guest speaker joining us today, and I'm going to invite him on stage in just a few minutes. Uh, his name is Leo Andrade. Uh, he's a graduate from our game development boot camp, and he's going to share some information uh, with us about his course experience and kind of what he's up to now. Uh, as you can see in the corner there, uh, Lazy Lion Games. Um, it's obviously not a Circuit Stream logo, so that means he has uh, a different company that he's working for now. So he's going to share some information there on that. Um, in today's presentation, I'm going to share information and uh, on how you can break into the gaming industry as developers or designers uh, with no pre, uh, prior experience, no previous experience. Uh, earning certifications is an amazing way to do this as it allows you to expand your knowledge and your skills, gain credibility, gain a competitive advantage, and become part of a connected com community. Ooh, I'm going to stumble over my words today. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, so Circuit Stream, I'll, I'll uh, share a little bit about uh, Circuit Stream in general. Uh, we began back in 2015 through a network of developers, designers, and creators, and we are now a leading provider of technology and learning um, in AR, VR, game development, design, product management, and software development. And we also offer courses for uh, pre-university students uh, preparing for university. So uh, we partner with leading, in, uh, leading companies and leading educational institutions. Uh, you can see some of those on screen there now, um, looking to um, uh, train people on uh, Basically, if they're looking to learn more about emerging technologies, um, yeah, it's a little bit about us. All right, so uh, Circuit Stream takes pride in the consistent and positive feedback and reviews we receive from our students. Uh, we currently have a 4.3 Trust Pilot rating, and 92% of our job seeking students have utilized our bootcamp student career services. 
In terms of course outcomes, 92% of our 2022 to 2023 graduates have found employment in relative uh, relevant roles, and 25% of them have achieved this milestone before they even completed the course. Something I didn't mention at the beginning of this presentation, guys, is this whole thing will be recorded. So if there's any stats, any information here that you're interested in uh, keeping, you can you can write notes, you can take pictures, you can take screenshots, or as I usually say, you can kind of just sit back and relax and uh, take in the information because uh, it will be sent in a full recording to your email inbox after the event here. So, uh, Structured boot camps maintain high quality, consistent teaching standards and provide organized curriculums that allow for a smooth progression from basic to advanced concepts. Students in boot camps benefit from direct feedback from experienced instructors, um, which is crucial for grasping and understanding complex skills and overcoming uh, learning hurdles. Jeez, I am so sorry, guys. I don't know why I'm stumbling over my words so much today. I'm gonna take a second. All right, so what is Unity and why should developers learn to use it? Uh, Unity is the primary tool that we are using in our game development bootcamp. It is one of the world's leading platforms for creating and operating interactive real-time 3D content. You can use it to create games, visualizations, immersive experiences, and much more. As you can see on screen, 70% of the top 1,000 mobile games were made using Unity, and there are Unity creators that are located all around the world. Uh, here are a few examples of some games made using Unity, uh, Pokemon Go, Beat Saber, Monument Valley, just to name a few. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share the Spring 2024 uh, Unity Sizzle Reel, um, which highlights some of the standout Unity games that have come out so far this year. Uh, apologies in advance if this skips at all or delays, um, and even more so, I was having a little bit of an issue with my internet signal, uh, which is why I had a delay at the beginning of this session. So. Uh, if anything goes sideways, if this is choppy or skippy at all while I'm playing this video, I, I do apologize. Um, I'm hoping it's uh, it's only a minute or two long, so I'm hoping it kind of plays smooth. But fingers crossed, we'll see how this goes here. Ask your questions about your dreams and memories. So that's just some of the uh, the highlights from uh, Unity uh, just so far this year. I believe that was their spring 2024 highlight reel or sizzle reel as they call it. Uh, so there'll probably be several more of those that come out this year, uh, but just gives you a really cool uh, overview of some of the projects that are being created through Unity. Um, I'm always shocked when I see it. I, I just uh, shocked at the graphics uh, from both Unity and Unreal. I'm gonna share some with uh, Unreal and just here in a moment as well, but uh, really cool, really cool to see. And so, yeah, so now for the Unreal Engine, uh, Unreal is the primary tool that we use in our game design bootcamp. Um, it was designed by Epic Games in 1998 and is another global leading platform used for creating and operating interactive real-time 3D content and has a comprehensive suite of tools for game designers and developers to use. Uh, over 50% of the next-gen games are being built using the Unreal Engine. On screen, uh, some of the examples of games that were created in Unreal. And just like I did with Unity a moment ago, I'm going to go ahead and take a moment and share the 2024 Unreal Sizzle Reel. Uh, this one was presented at the Game Developers Conference. Um, that just happened in San Francisco. We had some of our, our team there as well. 
and it uh, highlights just some of the standout projects from this year. So again, I, I do apologize. I'm not sure if the first one was choppy at all, uh, but I'm hoping that this one runs through smooth uh, as well. So here we go. Creation, elevation, bending space and time. A whole new reality. So that was uh, some of the highlights from Unreal so far this year. Again, I'm always just amazed by the um, the level of quality and the the graphics. Um, I started playing. <laughs> this is going to date me and age me a lot in here, but uh, I started playing Unreal Tournament back in 1998 when it first came out, and uh, the level of graphics from the original Unreal Engine to what people are creating now is just mind blowing. So. I get really excited when I see things like that. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to uh, move over, shift a little bit here and uh, take a look at some of the career opportunities in the gaming industry. Um, it has grown uh, significantly in recent years. And with that, obviously, uh, the opportunities have as well. Um, so becoming a game developer or designer can be a rewarding career choice for individuals who are passionate about gaming and for those who have a flair for creative and interactive experiences, problem solving and technology. On screen, you can see some of the top reasons why people choose to work as game developers and as game designers. Click here. Uh, and again, just as soon as I hit some stats, uh, in case anybody just joined the session or didn't hear me say this earlier, uh, this whole uh, session will be recorded and emailed out to everyone at the end of the event. So uh, feel free to write down any of these stats, but you don't have to. You can also just relax and you'll get a recording of this afterwards. So uh, in the US, there are over 3,000 game studios employing uh, almost 300,000 people. And in Canada, there's been tremendous growth over the last few years with over 900 active game studios, which is a 35% increase since just 2019, which is pretty crazy. Uh, not only that, the game industry contributed to over 5 billion in Canada's GDP, which is a 29% increase in the last four years. Uh, so as you can see, there is a lot of potential in this industry in both the US and in Canada. Um, as a game designer, you'll have the power to shape exciting new games. Uh, the average salary for game designers is 120,000 per year. Um, this is both in the US and Canada. Um, there are a range of job titles in this field. Um, I've just added a few on screen here so you can kind of see what some examples would be. Uh, so game designer, of course, but things like level designer, systems design, system designer, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, for game developers, currently there are over 8,000 job openings for game developers in the United States alone with the average salary sitting at 121,000 annually. Um, it's a great time to get into the industry, of course. And uh, similar to what I said before, uh, for game developers, you can get titles like game developer, um, but there's other ones like game engineers, game programmers. Uh, sometimes it's helpful to kind of know um, that there's other titles hiring and you don't have to search for just game developer roles once you've completed a course and, and you're looking for your first job or whatever the case may be. Uh, these are just a few of the many companies that hire for positions that we mentioned on the previous slides. 
Uh, many large, uh, well-known companies such as EA Games, Rockstar Games, Epic Games are hiring in this space, but there's also a ton of smaller indie game studios like Cloudhead Games, extremely okay games, and they're always uh, hiring in this space as well. In fact, a lot of these smaller studios will um, give out uh, internships a little bit easier. There might be a few less hurdles to get through. Um, internships are all, also available at uh, larger companies, like you know, we work with companies like Ubisoft, um, but uh, oftentimes there's a little bit of a larger pool for people kind of fighting for those ones. So the, uh, the smaller companies are a great space to look at as well. And we're partnered with some of these companies that you can see on screen here. Um, there's also a lot of top companies hiring for remote positions in 2024. Uh, I connected with uh, our admissions team recently, and um, there's a lot of questions from people um, just, you know, curious about opportunities for remote work. And um, I did a little bit of digging myself and all of these companies here shown on screen have had remote career positions posted within this last week. So there's definitely tons of companies uh, hiring for remote work in the gaming industry. Just wanted to give you guys a quick little snapshot of some companies that I, I personally found this week. So. And now I'm gonna go ahead and share some information on our two six month gaming boot camps with everyone. I'm gonna start off with the game design boot camp. Uh, this one is designed for those who want to enter the gaming industry as a designer, want to establish their own company, or utilize game design skills in their current roles. Uh, the great thing about this boot camp is that it is all project based. So you'll gain practical skills while working on real life projects. And over the course of the 30 weeks, you'll learn to analyze game design elements, conceive gameplay concepts, design game mechanics, create functioning game prototypes, and test novel gameplay ideas. Uh, you'll also learn about the role of a game designer and its various specializations and how they fit into video game production. Now on to the game development bootcamp. Um, our Unity Game Development Bootcamp is designed for people who are looking to get in the gaming industry as a developer, uh, those who are looking to start their own companies or are looking to bring Unity development to their current roles. Uh, this course is completely beginner friendly, but it does tackle advanced concepts as you progress. Um, so if you do have a bit of coding experience already, or if you've taken one of our previous courses, like, uh, like our 10 week XR development course, for example, uh, then the first few weeks of this one will probably be a little bit of a refresher for you. Uh, just touching on some of the initial concepts like coding. Um, but if you're completely brand new, that's the amazing side is that you don't have to have any experience. It will tackle them all at a beginner level to start with. So. Um, the great thing about this bootcamp as well is that it's project-based, uh, similar to the design bootcamp. Um, everything that you learn in class, you can apply to real life projects and create your own ideas in, um, as a final assignment in the course. You can work with a team of other students on that assignment, or you can work on your own and create the experience from start to finish um, using the schools that you, uh, skills that you've learned throughout the course. Our students really enjoy this aspect of the course because it allows them to build up a portfolio of projects as well. So when you finish the course, you're not just kind of you know, I've got some education, but I don't have anything else. You've actually got a tangible uh, handful of port portfolio projects uh, to present to companies with your resume when you're looking for opportunities. So in terms of the tools, um, I did mention Unity and Unreal previously for the two courses, um, but there are obviously some other tools. Um, now we are always iterating on the course materials and the tools used to ensure that they are the most up to date uh, for what's currently being used in the industry. So you know, if you've taken a course with us previously and you're in the crowd, you may see some tools that you worked with. You may see some new ones in here. Uh, basically, we're swapping them out all the time. If you take this course with us and then you end up taking another one in a year, you'll probably see some new tools added in there as well. So um, we found that having experience with Unity and Unreal um, specifically, though, helps set our students apart from the competition quite a bit. So. Uh, as I mentioned, you finish the course with a portfolio of projects to demonstrate the skills that you've learned. Um, and you also get a lifetime access to our private circuit stream community on Discord. Uh, it currently has over 1,200 members. This community is a great place to network, get help on your projects, ask questions, uh, find out about career opportunities, or just connect with like-minded people and you know, get excited about uh, video game development or, or design ideas. Uh, the best part is that you can be a part of this community for life. So once you've completed the course, you don't have like a set amount of time that you're in our community and then we don't boot you out the door. You are welcome to stay in this community. In fact, we, we encourage it and uh, we love seeing, you know, some of our more advanced students um, connecting with some of our newer students and assisting with things if they're, if they're asking questions or asking for some advice. So. Uh, our game develop, uh, development bootcamps graduates also have access to an additional certification through Unity. 
So the certification cost is included in our boot camp, and the boot camp education prepares students to write the exam once they've completed the course. So you do get you do get certified by us um, once you've completed the course. But Unity has their own levels of certification, and it usually costs money to go in and do it. If you take the course with us, we include the um, certification uh, cost from Unity certification in this course. And then the course itself should prepare you to be able to write the exam once you've completed it. So just an, an added level of certification for you and additional networking opportunities through that. Now, uh, to share some information on the career development and support offered through the boot camps, I'd like to invite Circuit Streams uh, Student Outcome Manager, Wanai, on stage. Welcome, Wanai. Thanks, Tyler. Um, so all of our boot camps are structured with ample career support and guidance. The Circuit Stream Career Labs teach students how to leverage technical and behavioral strengths, gain awareness of the digital ecosystem, create compelling portfolios, elevate digital presence, learn how to network effectively, as well as become interview ready for industry jobs. Our career and networking support really sets our programs apart from others that you may find. This is because every student has different objectives coming in, but those that are looking for new jobs or to improve their current positions find this aspect of the course incredibly helpful. In fact, 92% of our 2022-2023 game development graduates utilized our career services support. As a part of the career support, our boot camps also come with a student pitch day, which happens towards the end of the program. Students have the opportunity to showcase their capstone projects to hiring and industry partners. This event is an amazing way to add people to your network, be considered for any job openings they may have, or to just receive feedback on your projects from hiring managers working in the industry. Up next is a little preview of a game a former student made as their ca uh, capstone project. This game was made by Emiliano Fantasia for the Unity Game Development Bootcamp. All right, I'm gonna share this clip here. Just a little preview clip and then I'll like pass it back over to you. Sorry, when I. <laughs> All right, thanks, Tyler. So it's a very fun little game and we love seeing the projects that our students create. We also have private um, AMA sessions that are exclusive to our students and alumni community. In these sessions, students get to network and interact with industry specialists, giving them real world information on how to successfully break into gaming as well as inside information on what hiring managers look out for. Confirmed for 2024 so far, we have guests joining us from amazing companies, including Unity, Keyword Studios, and Game Breaking Studios. And we also have more on deck from Riot Games, Ubisoft, and Electronic Arts. Back to you, Tyler. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Wanai. Um, all right, so I'm going to share a little bit more on that after, but um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and invite, uh, officially invite today's guest speaker on stage. Um, Leo is, like I mentioned uh, before, a graduate from our game development boot camp, and uh, he's also the CEO of Lazy Lion Games. So welcome to the stage, Leo. Hello, hello. Uh, thank you, Tyler. Thanks for everyone for being here. I, I appreciate it you all and your patience. Uh, and yeah, it's great to be a part of part of another info session. I love it. Perfect. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, I've got some questions here uh, ready for you. Um, let me just pull up the first one here. So uh, first thing I'll ask you is, uh, what do you enjoy most about gaming? And what is your favorite game? Um, I think my favorite thing about gaming, uh, there, there are two things. The first one is competition. I love competitive games. Uh, so I've always been a sports uh, game person. So I played a lot of Madden. I even played it competitively for a bit. 
I played a lot of a lot of FIFA. I'm from Brazil originally, so soccer is in my blood. Uh, you know, anything that is kind of competitive always uh, catches my eye. But then the other thing is also uh, kind of leaving the world that we live in, right? For some people, the world might not be looking like it's a really cool place right now, um, myself included. And sometimes kind of just being able to dive into a fantasy world somewhere where, where things are working appropriately. Uh, it's just nice to have that, um, to, have, to, to be able to go away like that. Uh, and I think my favorite game at the moment uh, it would be Baldur's Gate 3. I've dedicated an embarrassing amount of hours to that game, multiple campaigns. Um, and the reason for that is I think it is a thorough game. Uh, there are so many different outcomes that you can have. It's really incredible what they were able to do with it. From all the, the um, dialogue options to the battling mechanics to the visuals to literally everything. You can be good or bad. You can j just you really choose your own path. And it feels like the game isn't trying to take you anywhere. It's like really you go anywhere you want. And it, it did win Game of the Year, Alex. Uh, that is true. Uh, so it's fantastic. I mean, I, I do have over 400 hours. Uh, and it, I, I love D&D already. So it kind of matched, you know, it's D&D in video game format. So I, it's, my, it's my favorite game currently, yes. I've heard of it. I haven't tried it myself. I, you should. I just like when you, you when you say you you jump into video games to escape the real world sometimes, which I'm sure everybody does. And I just think yeah. about the amount of hours that I've escaped into like shooting people in Unreal Tournament. And I'm like, what a <laughs> what a way to to escape the world. <laughs> maybe that's the escape you need. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Let me pull up the next question here. Uh, what initially attracted you to the game development bootcamp? That's a great question. Uh, so I was kind of in a in a software engineer mindset where I was like, I'm going to learn Python because I feel like a lot of people need that. But then I just didn't feel that pull, right? Like I didn't feel that passion of like working on a back end and just code. And I'm somebody who needs like a lot of visual feedback uh, to kind of understand my work better. So I gave game development a try. I did like the free courses that Unity provides. Um, they're not, you know, incredibly thorough, but there's, there's a little bit of structure to it, at least, uh, they don't, they're not too advanced. And then I fell in love. I was like, oh, you mean I can write six lines of code and I can make a character move. That's absolutely amazing. Right? Like I can see that, um, that happen in real time. So I started kind of researching for more structured courses, more, um, you know, like, uh, like really trying to understand why the it's okay we can leave it like that i don't understand why that's happening but that's fine um sure <laughs> i i really started to looking uh, look for more structured courses um which is when i found circus stream and when i was looking at all the things that circus stream provided um i fell in love with exactly the the career opportunities, or sorry, the career side of the bootcamp, as well as pitch day, which we're going to talk a little bit more about in the future. Um, but it's it was kind of that that other places didn't really provide or give a, a, a lot of attention to. And coming from somebody who wasn't in the industry before, right? Coming coming from a place where I wasn't in the gaming industry before, um, I knew that I was going to need help translating my my previous experiences to the gaming industry, right? How can I make my previous industries look good in a resume and in my portfolio uh, to kind of show off? And the, the career service did exactly that. All right. I just uh, I was just sending a note here through as well. We've got a few team members on the back end. So I was just seeing... Uh asking to keep this the screen size the same size there for us I, one of us is probably flipping it um awesome awesome and i think the uh the last question too i was talking i said all the hours i put into unreal tournament i meant to say fortnite we were talking about unreal tournament <laughs> earlier so yes. um all right so the next question for you here um did you have any coding experience going into the course and did you find that the boot camp paced that part well for you or for true beginners yeah, so I I did um, have a little bit of a background. I did like a CSC minor in college, but it had been six to seven years since <laughs> since that happened. Uh, maybe not seven, but it had been at least like five. 
Um, and so I, I kind of had an idea of code structure, right? Like it wasn't completely new to me, um, but I hadn't ever tackled C Sharp, which is the language that Unity uses, other than those free courses that I talked about. So I had an idea of what I was looking at, but with that said, the beginning of the bootcamp was slow for me exactly because it really takes off from the beginning, right? So the first couple of weeks, I was like, oh, this is familiar, this stuff I've learned. That's because I did like previous, I, I studied previously a little bit, just the beginning, right? So uh, the, the boot camp really does pick up from zero. However, it is fast paced, as you can expect. It's a six month intensive course, right? It's in the name. Uh, so it, it will start from zero. But if you don't keep up with homework assignments, if you don't keep up with projects, if you don't keep up with the courses, you will start to fall back and it will be up to you to kind of um, catch up, which is easy to do because all the classes are recorded. You have access to that um, forever. So, um, yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So good for beginners and then also good for reviewing the, the info afterwards too. Um, okay, so uh, what were the core areas or topics that were covered in the bootcamp? So we cover everything from mechanics, right? So simple mechanics, how to make a character move, how to make uh, like what is an interface in C Sharp? What, is, uh, what, what are the different uh, um, classes that you can use? Uh, we also talk a lot about Unity and all of the, the um, features that it has for us. Uh, we talk about um, data structures and algorithms as well. So we get a little bit more into that software engineering mindset where we kind of learn that logic and then you even get to a point in the, the fifth and final, uh, um, oh my God, module of the, of the bootcamp is multiplayer. So you get to touch on multiplayer a little bit. You build a very simple game using netcode for game objects, which is uh, Unity's kind of official solution to multi multiplayer. So you get to learn about the server client relationship. You get to learn about syn synchronizing information across the network. Uh, all of that. So it's really, really thorough from the beginning, uh, from beginner to advanced. Amazing, amazing. And if anybody wants to read more on that too, um, we'll share some some links later. But if you download the syllabus, it'll give you all the different modules and the different sections and kind of, you know, explain a little bit more in depth of what Leo just mentioned there too. So um, amazing, amazing. All right. Can you describe some of the uh, benefits that the Structured Bootcamp provides uh, compared to attempting to teach yourself game development online using like YouTube tutorials or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. Yeah, I think the, the biggest benefit of structure, right, is like somebody who has been doing this for a long time has created a syllabus that kind of tells you the progression that you need, right? Whereas in tutorials, you might be jumping from video to video or from creator to creator, right? And you like don't like sometimes you might jump to something that you think you need in a project that you're building, but it's way too advanced. And then you kind of have to backtrack to be like, okay, but what do I need to learn? But then you never actually learn the foundations of what you just learned. So you don't really know how to apply it, right? You copy it from the tutorial, you kind of get through it, but you don't really know why you're doing what you're doing. You don't know why you're applying. So the bootcamp is a great way or, or any structured course is a really good way to kind of set the foundation, right? Make sure you understand everything that you're doing because that's when you're going to go from an okay game developer to a really good game developer is knowing where um, knowing where to go, right? And, and with tutorials, it, it's what I just said. I, I've used many and still use many. They do have their value, but they are complementary, right? They, they are added work when there's something specific that you don't know, but you already do have that nice base. And you just have to be like, how do I do this very specific thing? Oh, I got you. But the tendency is to copy it, right? The tendency is to be like, okay, I'm just going to apply this, right? There are many tutorials that I've watched in the past um, for stuff that's more advanced that I wouldn't be able to do, you know, just out of, out of the blue. I still would have to go back and kind of check it. Uh, so the structure provides you that foundation and that growth in a way that somebody, like I said, who's been doing, a long, uh, doing it for a long time has been able to kind of set it up for you. Absolutely. Yeah, I always, I always use the example of this one. I, I mean, it's been years. I probably couldn't do it now, but um, I taught myself how to play a few, a few songs on the piano years ago, and I, I can't read sheet music at all. But right. I used YouTube tutorials, and I did exactly what you said. I just mimicked what they did, and I right. copied it, but I had no idea how to explain what I was doing afterwards other than just saying, you know, this one sounds like this one did in the video. So 
Um, so yeah, it's, it's always better to understand the actual core concepts of something and then, you know, use, use things like YouTube to define to like specializations or, you know, right, specific exactly. things like Leo said. So. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. What do I have next for you here? Uh, were there opportunities for networking, connecting uh, during the boot camp, and how did these connections uh, benefit you? Absolutely. I mean, so much, right? So um, let's talk about it. it there, there's several opportunities for networking. You kind of have to put yourself out there, though. Uh, and the first opportunity is just within class, right? There are going to be projects that you're going to work with some people. Here's an example. Uh, Tyler said, I founded my own uh, gaming studio, Lazy Lion Games. My art designer was in my boot camp course. And my senior dev is my former instructor. So there's already right two opportunity for networking. And I'm sure that they feel the same way that they networked with me, right? Which is how I knew about them uh, to bring them in to this role. Um, there was also during my boot camp uh, after pitch day, I got contacted by somebody uh, for a full time opportunity who they they had heard from an instructor at Circus Stream who wasn't even my instructor. I just happened to go to a few of his office hours that I was doing really well and that I should be hired. It, I was offered the job, but that ended up falling through for some reasons uh, that I can't get into legally. Uh, but it was on their side. It wasn't my fault. Let's just say that. <laughs> uh, so the, the, the connections really, really do help. And I mean, I've, I've just released a game on Steam uh, last week. If anyone's interested, it's called Ball Blitz. Sorry for the shameless plug, Tyler. Um, but the person who did the UI for my game, I found them in the Circus Stream Discord, right? So it really is a community that is built around networking and collaborations. Um, and, you know, if you, for example, are building a passion project after your boot camp because you're struggling to find a job uh, because that happens, right? You can go to the boot to the to the Discord and just be like, does anyone want to collaborate on this project that I have? Here's my idea, right? Like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to pay you, uh, but we can probably work on this, you know, 10 hours a week, make it really slow, but maybe be done in six months if it's a simple game. And people will usually bite on that. So that community is probably now what I value the most from Cir like having graduated what I value the most from Circuit Stream. Yeah, absolutely. And we encourage students to use it throughout the course, too. But um, so many find value, like you said, afterwards, once they're kind of in a position and they're like, they're looking for opportunities and they need, you know, advice on something and they don't have an instructor there anymore. And it's just, it's such a, such a valuable network of people. So, yeah. and people in this industry are so supportive. Everyone wants to kind of work together. And, you know, when you learn something that helps you, it's, you know, in my experience, people are so excited to want to share that messaging with other people and teach them how to do it as well. So, all right. So uh, what kind of career support did the bootcamp provide for you? And um, how did it prepare you for entering into the game industry? And then a second part to that is how was your experience presenting uh, your project on pitch day? So the support that the career, uh, the, the career support that the bootcamp provided, like I said, was one of the main reasons why I joined the bootcamp in the first place. Um, and I'll just put it out this way. I had no portfolio, right? And my resume, uh, the top thing was Twitch streamer. So Think about right, like how I was able to be changed into being offered a full-time job. Again, that fell through because of reasons, but I ended up being offered that job because now I had a portfolio with like four to five projects to show, right? And I had a resume that was respectable. Uh, so I literally didn't have that. So how did it support me? It, it created my career image in the game dev, right? It wasn't like, oh, it made me look better. I didn't have a look. So we'll just put it out that way. Um, and my experience presenting at Pitch Day uh, was amazing. Uh, I love Pitch Day. It's still my favorite thing. Um, I always bother uh, when I to invite me, even if I'm not there. I just want to be there just to watch and look uh, because I love Pitch Day because it's a Pitch Day is so for anyone that doesn't know at the end of your boot camp, you're going to have an opportunity to present to hiring partners that Circus Stream gets right. You're going to present your capstone or a project that you've been working for on. Um, I presented Two projects, I presented one with a group where I barely talked because I had one by myself. Uh, and the project by myself, I had been working on for like four months with the group. It was a capstone, so it was just one month. Um, and it's a window, right? It's a window for people to see your work, something that you don't get. How many cold messages do you have to send on LinkedIn for one person to be like, sure, you know, present to me your game? Like, 
when when they look around and you have no uh, industry experience they're they're not going to bother right because they are probably receiving a bunch of those messages pitch day is exactly that circuit stream does all the hard work for you brings those hard hiring partners to pitch day and you just get to present you just get to have fun it's like here's my passion project here's what i've been working on right you just get to tell them your story to show them who you are i believe you have 10 minutes to just talk about yourself if you're presenting by yourself or in a group and your project and then five minutes for q a so they get to know you a little bit better um even if a job doesn't come out of it it's a great opportunity for networking um i attended the last uh circuit stream pitch day as an instructor because i taught the boot camp for, for a semester and i connected with people that were there you know uh, as hiring partners as well on linkedin and kind of have interacted with them so it's just a, a really good place where people can kind of come together and appreciate the work that you would be doing uh, as uh, game devs, as well as the work that Circus Stream does for the students. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good opportunity for you to kind of show, share what your specific skills are and kind of what you worked on. And then also what you're looking for, like especially in the group product uh, projects. We encourage each of them to kind of take a moment and say, OK, you know, within this game, these are these are the specific areas that I worked on. And then, um, you know, following this course, now that we're done, th this is the type of opportunity that I'm looking for. And like Leo said, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a room full of people who are, are there wanting to hear that messaging. They're excited to see the student projects. And quite often, there's quite a few opportunities that come out of those uh, pitch day sessions. So cool. All right. So I've got, I think I've got three more for you here. Um, what is your personal outlook on the current state of the gaming industry based on your experience? And are there um, lots of opportunities for new developers and designers to find work? There are, right? Uh, the market has been better. And the reason for that is it kind of corrected itself after COVID, right? So when, when COVID hit, uh, a lot of you know games were being played, games were being developed, people were at home doing nothing, right? So uh, the, there was a lot of work that kind of came from that. And then companies are now kind of, unfortunately, and this is the tech industry, not the gaming industry, having to take a, a step back on that a little bit. However, with that said, there are a lot of uh, uh, opportunities being open because some of the people that are being laid off, unfortunately, are more senior people who require more money, right? So they're opening up more junior, like entry level jobs. Um, there are also, you know, indie studios popping up every day. Me. Right. Like I, I just did that. And we're currently hiring for a multiplayer uh, uh, specialist. So which we're hoping to hire in the next week or so. So, you know, if anyone has any questions on this side of the hiring, uh, um, you know, uh, what do I want to go universe? Uh, you can ask me uh, or you can put it in the questions tab and we're going to talk about it in the end. But, you know, I've been going through applications. I put the I put the job, job job post a couple of days ago, and there are 640 applicants to uh, to this position. Uh, and then I can give you a little bit of tips and tricks of what made it through, or, or like the people that I you know got through, the people that I did. So um, something you can only get here in the info session, right? Uh, but there are opportunities. That said, right? And what people are looking for the most is projects. So if you uh, this is kind of you know what i'll save this for question 11 because it's about advice and this is my biggest advice uh it is there are opportunities there are new people making games every day and the most important thing about the gaming industry you can make a you can make a game you know in two months and you can publish it to itch.io which is free it's not like steam and you have something to show for you don't depend on anyone giving you a chance to make a game right you can make a game by yourself so do with that what you will Absolutely. All right. All right. And uh, yeah, question 11, we'll cover that one. There's one more before that. Um, are there opportunities for remote video game development and design work in 2024? So many. Uh, and the reason for that is people learned that people still do their jobs from home during COVID, right? Like, I think I think CEOs and presidents and managers who are afraid that people would just slack off learn that that's not the case. And sometimes they're even more productive at home because they're in their like safe space. Um, and thankfully for us, you know, game development is something that can be completely done from home. You just like for, for Lazy Lion, we have two weekly meetings. Um, other than that, we set our goals for the week and people just do their job during the week and we communicate constantly. But, you know, 
it's also cheaper, right? Like I'm running the studio. I don't need to have a space, right? Why would I? That's that makes no sense. People are just as productive as home as they are, you know, in person. Uh, so I would say that we are shifting even more to remote, unless you're talking about like EA, right? Ubisoft, like the really big ones that have headquarters that have had offices for a long time. I think the newer kind of studios that are popping up um, are going to do so remotely first. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I shared earlier in the presentation, you'll get a recording of the whole, the whole session, everybody here, but if you pay attention to the slide that I put up, it shows just a whole, a whole whack of really top companies that are, are hiring remote positions even still. So there's definitely tons of opportunity out there. And then, so the final question that I have for you, um, I mean, I'll, I'll, after this, I'll invite you to share your uh, contact details as well. I guess that would be like the final, final one that I didn't prep you on, but um, considering your experience, what advice would you give to individuals who are interested in starting their journey in game development or design and are considering enrolling in a boot camp like this one or these the, ones? The biggest, literally the biggest advice I can give anybody is make stuff, just make them, right? You're going to get so much more comfortable with coding, with uh, uh, navigating Unity, with navigating Unreal if you choose to do that. If you just make things in the beginning, it's going to be harder. Obviously, it's going to be new to you, right? But if you just kind of go through the motions and you just force yourself to slowly learn the the, the progress, you're going to get so much better, so much better. That there's there's only so much that a live session can do for you, right? We can show you the tools and we can teach you the tools, but once you get the tools, what are you going to do with it, right? It's not going to be enough. Uh, I, I, I've said this in info sessions before where a lot of people think like, oh, I'm going to go through the boot camp and I'm going to get a 100%, which is good. And then I'm going to have a job. That's not the case, right? So you're going to be given the tools to get a job, but you have to do something with those tools. You have to build something with it, right? Whether that's the capstone, that's part of the boot camp. If you want to dedicate a lot of time to that, that's great. Whether it's a passion project that you have on the side, that's great as well. But especially now that I'm hiring, right, I look for what people have worked on, right? Even if it's their own project, right? Show me a, an impressive project that you did by yourself. And I don't care how many years you spent at Blizzard, right? Like it's, you can build anything by yourself. You just have to have the tools and you just have to learn how to use them. And Circuit Stream will show you the tools and will teach you the tools. But then you have to take that and run with it, right? You have to take it and build stuff with it. Otherwise, the tools are just sitting there, right? Um, and as far as the game development goes or, or the boot camp goes, um, I would say that the biggest thing is to do the work. Uh, so keep up with the assignments, keep up with the, the exams, right? Because uh, we don't really have, uh, it depends on the instructor, but usually we don't give like a set deadline per assignment. Like you have to complete this by a week, like, you know, a week from now, we usually let students kind of, um, um, go at their own pace because a lot of people have jobs. A lot of people, you know, are in school. And so it depends. It's hard. But what I try to, what I tell people is that if you leave assignment one for the last week of class, assignment one is just a chore for you. You're not going to learn anything from it now because you already did right by all the work that you've done. And so now it's become a chore and it's annoying that you have to do it. But if you do in the beginning, if you do it with the course, now it's complementing what and it's supplementing what you've learned in the course. And it's just adding on to that base that I talked about a little bit ago. Awesome. Awesome. Really, really good advice. So um, that's that's it. That's all the questions I had here for you, Leo. Um, we made through the list. Um, but, uh, there are going to be, I, I can see there's a bunch more in the, the questions tab already. So, um, if anybody has any further questions for Leo, um, just throw them into the questions tab now, and I'm going to share a little bit more information uh, about the upcoming course dates. And, uh, then I'll invite Leo back up in literally like three or four minutes here and we'll go through the Q and A. So perfect. All right. So let me bring this one back up here. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to share some um, information on the schedule and the course outcomes for everyone. Um, so both of the gaming boot camps are 30 weeks long and consist of five hours of live online instruction per week via video conference and roughly 10 hours of independent study. Uh, the great thing to note is that these live sessions are recorded just like this um, information session is, 
and uh, you can go back and review it afterwards. So if you just, you know, if you missed a point or if the phone rang or the doorbell rang, or if you just, you know, you want to go back and kind of listen to the instructor explain something through through one, one or two more times, you can go back uh, in the recording as many times as you like. And you have access, uh, lifetime access to those class recordings and materials, as Leo said before. Um, so even after you finish the boot camp, um, we're still there to support you and the, the lessons and the information is still there to support you as well. So some of the benefits, there's a million amazing benefits to uh, gaming boot camps in general. Um, if all they did was provide students with a possible career in the gaming industry, in my opinion, I think they would be worth it. Um, but I am going to share some of the additional benefits with you that come from our gaming boot camps. Um, so these boot camps come with 30 weeks of instructor-led classes, uh, which include 12 technical and career labs and 10 career one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, these boot camps provide students with foundational game development and game design core concepts. The boot camps connect students to a network of instructors and over 2,000 alumni. I think I missed one there. Um, the boot camps allow students to create and develop comprehensive portfolios using their own ideas. And finally, as a part um, of our boot camps, we offer exclusive access to private Ask Me Anything sessions for our students. Um, when I shared a little bit on this earlier, but um, this is a reminder here. This is just some of the speakers that we've had uh, confirmed for 2024 and some of the companies there. And then also as a quick reminder, these are some of the key outcomes from our game development bootcamp. And I'm going to share some of the outcomes here uh, from the game design bootcamp. Just as a, just a quick refresher for everyone. And uh, in terms of the upcoming dates, we typically run the bootcamps every five to six months or so. Um, the upcoming cohorts um, are running from May 21st to December 14th. Uh, so they are coming in really quickly here. Uh, May 17th would be the enrollment deadline. So we've got a few more weeks here, a couple more weeks here to uh, get registrations in for those. Uh, I'm not sure. I think there's availability still in both of them. Um, but if you just reach out and uh, you know inquire with the admissions team, they can let you know what the availability uh, looks like there. And if you want to register for the boot camps, you can visit the URLs on screen here. You can submit an application directly. You can also go to the websites using these URLs and you can um, download the course uh, syllabi if you want to look into the details a little bit further. Um, but if you're hovering over the screen with your phone right now, you just have to tap on the QR code that you want and then tap the link at the bottom and it should take you right to it. Um, but again, these this, this whole presentation is going to be sent out to you guys um, after the event. So you can also just access the recording and, and uh, access these QR codes that way. So um, all right, I'm going to take the codes off the screen now. <laughs> And if you have any questions about our courses or how to get started, you can reach us directly using the contact information on screen. Admissions at circuitstream.com should take you through to our admissions team, and we can provide information about the courses available uh, directly through us or through our university partners, these, uh, these guys on screen here. And that's it. That's the uh, all the information I wanted to share. Uh, following the, the uh, Q&A session with uh, Leo, now we're going to do an audience Q&A session with Leo. So I'll go ahead and close the presentation screen because we don't need that anymore. And I'm going to flip over to the questions here and see what we've got. And we'll do our best to, uh, to answer all of these questions for you guys. So uh, do you guys offer some type of scholarship or financial help? Um, so we, uh, I, I don't think we have any scholarships, but we do have um, uh, finance plans available for our courses. So if you were looking to register, uh, you don't have to pay for the courses up front. Uh, we do have plans where you can pay it over, I think, like six months or 12 months or 24. Um, the specific uh, month ranges there, the admissions team can, can definitely confirm for you. Um, but there's there's definitely options there. You, you don't have to pay for the courses all, all up front at once. You can if you want to, but you don't have to, you don't have to do it that way. Um, I'm interested in taking both courses, but finances are a huge struggle for me. Am I able to apply for OSAP through these boot camps? Um, this is, again, this is something I'd want to uh, direct to the admissions team just to make sure that they, they can kind of provide you with the most accurate information. I know that we have students that are reaching out for different types of funding. I would just have to let them confirm which ones are available and which ones would be successful um, options for you there. So um, Jordan, we can reach back out to you um, after the session here if you like, um, or if you like, you can just uh, send an email to the admissions at circuitstream.com and uh, we can definitely provide you with some more information there and uh, we can send you the payment plan options too. All right. Um, is it possible to do a boot camp while working full time at the same time? I already have a web development background. 
Um, I'm going to let Leo answer that one. Uh, it is. The course. It is. Uh, right. So what I, what I t tell people is you're probably going to need about, so there's five hours of class every week. Uh, and then there's a lab once a month. Uh, and that's all, I believe, two and a half, or sorry, two labs a month. Uh, one career, one technical, um, that there are two and a half hours. So you're looking at an average, I would say, of 10 to 12 hours a week of bootcamp work if you're keeping up with the assignments, right? But like I said, the the bootcamp is designed for people just like you who have a full-time job and can't necessarily spend, you know, six to seven hours a day working on bootcamp stuff or creating a new game or stuff like that. That's why there aren't hard deadlines. That's why you can catch up whenever you have a break. Um, I would always suggest to attend the live sessions as much as possible. So it would depend on how those kind of uh, work with your schedule. But, you know, they are recorded. So if you feel like you learn just as much from watching the recording as you would from the live session, that's not a problem, right? Personally, I am somebody who uh, uh, benefits more from the live sessions because you can ask questions. Your, you know, your classmates are there as well. You're all kind of working together. Absolutely, perfect. All right. Um, the game design bootcamp. It'd be offered through a UCS School of Continuing Studies, or is it only through Circuit Stream? So no, it is. It is available through UCF Cont Continuing Studies in partnership with Circuit Stream. Um, so you can take the the course through that school, and you'd be certified um, from both Circuit Stream and from uh, UCF. Um, so if you want to do that, um, John, just reach out again. Um, you can reach out to the admissions at CircuitStream.com. Um, I'll make a note here for the admissions team to to kind of do maybe some follow up with you afterwards there as well. But if you uh, go to the URL or the uh, the QR code rather that I shared on the uh, previous slide and go to the UCF webpage. It'll give you the information on the course. And if you register through, through that, that's where you'll get certified by UCF as well. So um, should I continue learning Blender or should I just switch over to learning Unreal for game design? Do you have so, any advice there? Yeah. yeah, so two different things, right? Uh, Blender is a 3D modeling software, uh, whereas Unreal is a game engine. Uh, so you're doing two separate things, right? And then one thing I also want to make clear here, the game design is about becoming a game designer, not necessarily becoming a game artist, right? So a designer involves a lot more thing than being an artist. You're talking about level design. You're talking about the game design document and how to write a really good one. You're talking about prototyping in Unreal. You're talking about a bunch of different things, not necessarily just how to model, but, right? So if you're somebody who enjoys 3D modeling, that's great. There's a lot of opportunity out there for that as well. And if you're already advanced in Blender, uh, Blender, I would say, Use that also, right? Uh, learning Blender doesn't stop you from learning Unity and Unreal. It would be extra. Like it would be supplementary for you using Unity and Unreal. Like art is something that I cannot do. I just, I can't design. I'm not good at drawing. I'm not good at modeling. It just doesn't come out well. So um, I never bothered learning Blender because I knew that that skill, one, I'm not necessarily passionate about, and two, I wasn't really good at, right? So I've always loved de development and I was like, I want to do this path instead. Um, so yeah, you don't necessarily have to stop if you think you can choose one or the other. And it's more about, do you want to be a developer? Do you want to be an artist, right? Um, or you can be either and then supplement that with the game design as well, because that's a different skill altogether. Um, but yeah, those are two separate things. Yeah, they can be complementary for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so... And just a quick note too, I can see some of the questions I've answered live. I think our, our team is doing um, answering a little bit more in depth too. I can see some people ch typing in there too. So uh, just pay attention to your questions. Even if I've answered them, we might be adding more details in there for you. Um, all right. How do we feel about emerging AI technologies on Unity like Moonlander AI? Um, whole world's built in mere minutes. Do you plan to teach those tools um, as they're developed further? and become more relevant? Or do you cover the use of AI in game development? Uh, so AI is not currently covered in the game development bootcamp. And that's for a couple of different reasons. Uh, the first one is that we want to teach you the foundations, right? Teach you how to do it. Um, we don't necessarily want AI to just kind of do it for you. Um, the second reason is that as powerful as AI already is, it isn't necessarily creative. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of uh, the, the creative AI 
you will kind of have to describe what you want, right? And then it kind of does it uh, for you and sometimes not necessarily super well. Uh, whenever I get a question about AI and game development, I always say that it can do the, let's call it like the robot work, right? Something that it just needs to be done, like needs to be put out there quickly, but it can't really build an entire game by itself, right? So if you're worried about AI, what I will tell you is the people that will stay behind or the fall behind are the people that don't necessarily use AI to complement their, their work, right? I can use ChatGPT every so often to ask a question about something that I'm stuck in, um, right? For example, when I was publishing my game to Steam, there was a question that I couldn't find anywhere uh, the answer to, and ChatGPT had it. So it's powerful. It is a powerful tool, but you have to know how to use it and when to use it. Another thing I'll tell you is the society, right? A lot of the creative part of society has kind of agreed that just using AI isn't that cool, right? So if, you know, when you publish this team, for example, you have to disclose if somebody uh, or, or if something was uh, AI create, like created by AI in your game, whether that's art, whether that's logic, anything like that, you have to disclose that to Steam. Um, I don't know what happens if they find out if you lied. Uh, I wouldn't try to find out. Uh, but a lot of people kind of feel a little bit, uh, you know, pulled back from anything that is kind of AI created currently. I think that will go away in the future, uh, but currently that's the case. So no, we don't teach it. Um, yes, it's very powerful. Learn how to use it with the things that you learn. But again, if you don't know the basics, you can't just use AI. It's not going to be magic like that because you have to describe what you want. You have to work with the AI many times. Uh, like if you if you want to code a class in ChatGPT, uh, like to Unity, you kind of have to describe what you want and then it shoots something back. You have to identify if the behavior isn't necessarily what you wanted, right? You have to be able to tell it back why that wasn't working. And if you don't have the, the basics, you're not going to be able to do that. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you, Leo. You've answered that better than I could. And I just, I wanted to jump back on uh, one of the questions that uh, um, our team member Zoe answered behind the scenes here. And I do apologize, um, John. Yes, the, the game development course is available through UCF. Um, the game design course is not available through that school, uh, but it is available through CircuitStream. So uh, you can take the course, it, it'd be exactly the same curriculum. It would just be available through CircuitStream directly, not through UCF. So I do apologize for any confusion there. Um, and as Zoe said, if you reach out to admissions at CircuitStream, if you have any questions at all, we can definitely provide more information there. So sorry, sorry for the misinformation there, John. Um, okay, so the next one here, um, is it realistic to take both boot camps at the same time? I always laugh at the uh, the people who are excited to do that. Um, if, we, if we choose to do one as a recommendation, um, someone new in the industry. So I'll just give my answer really quickly and then I'll, I'll let Leo give you a little more accurate one because he actually took a course. But um, I think it, it'd probably be incredibly easy to burn out trying to do two, two of the courses at the same time. Some people might be able to do it. Um, I would usually recommend maybe starting with one and then maybe shifting into the other one after, especially if you're doing other things in life, if you have a full-time job, um, if, you know, anything, if you have any responsibility, basically, it's, it'd probably be hard to take on two boot camps simultaneously. And then in terms of deciding which one you wanted to do first, um, it really de depends on where your um, interests lie. I mean, if you're um, more like Leo and you're more into the coding side and you don't like drawing and it's not really uh, where you find your, your strong suit, then you're probably going to find yourself on the development side just based on the, um, you know, the principles of the, the job and of the course are probably going to align a little bit more with what you're interested in. Um, whereas if you are interested in uh, drawing and you're in interested in doing all that, then the design one versus the development would probably be a better fit. So um, I can see Leo nodding. I'll, I'll let him add in uh, based on his actual experience there now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think you said everything. The, the only thing is like, how much time do you have, right? Like how much free time? Uh, are you currently unemployed and like you're out of school and you're just looking for like to really dive deep into game dev and game design? then yeah, absolutely, you can take both of them if you want to kind of make that like your full-time job for six months, right? Like, I want, I want to do nothing else other than just go insane at Circus Stream and just, you know, dedicate myself to game dev and game design. You can absolutely do that. Um, and I echo what Tyler said about, you know, like choosing one or the other. It really depends on what you want. If you want to create mechanics, if you want to create features, behavior, stuff like that, that's your development. If you want to think about 
what the game is going to be, right? Creating the flow for the user, creating the story, the level design, all of that, then you're talking about game design. Absolutely. All right. Um, all right. So the next one here. Uh, would this bootcamp be good for someone who already has a good understanding of programming? Um, be great. Yeah, I know we, yeah, I was gonna say we yeah. touched on it before. The best thing to do is to take a look at the syllabus, I guess, and, and make sure that there are areas in there that you want to learn and, and that you don't already understand the, but my, my guess is if you're asking, you probably don't understand all the, all the concepts of, of the gaming uh, bootcamp overall. So absolutely. But yeah, go ahead, Leo. Um, I'll let you add it. Yeah, it'd be great because, uh, what I usually think is like learning a, a new language in, in, in coding, like a new coding language is a lot easier if you already know another one, right? Because the logic is more or less the same um, for every language. It's just like, how do you write it, right? <laughs> like how, how do you get the behavior that you want to get across? How do you make that, put, put that into code? So if you have previous understanding of programming, even if it's not in C-sharp, it's gonna be a huge help for the, for the bootcamp. Like I said, I had a small understanding of programming and it was already a help, a, a huge help. Uh, but just like I said, the beginning of the, the course, when it comes to coding, might feel a little bit slower to you because we're like, we're, we're gonna talk about, you know, if statements and we're gonna talk about loops and we're gonna talk about variables. And because it does come in from zero, right? It assumes that you know nothing. Um, so it might be a little slower, but do you know how to apply what you know of programming into game dev specifically? And that's where the connection happens, right? You might be really good at Python, but you've never done Python for games. So you might have an understanding of the, the coding and it might be a little bit slower for you, but you're gonna have a leg up for sure when it comes to learning C-sharp specifically and how C-sharp is used for gaming. Perfect, all right. Let me see what we've got next here. Uh, what are some good majors to go into besides game design uh, to get a good head start in a career in the industry? Um, also, what are some tips in getting um, internships for someone at a beginner level? Um, so good majors would include anything. If you're talking about game development, right? Um, good majors would include anything that allows you to code and to understand the logic behind coding. It's what I just said, right? You can learn any language. Uh, it's just a matter of learning the syntax for that language. So if in college you want to, you know, take CSE like I did and you learn a little bit of C++, you learn a little bit of Java, which, by the way, are very valuable for the tech industry in general, uh, if you don't want to necessarily use it as game dev. Um, but C++ is used by Unreal. Um, that will would be uh, a leg up, right? Like you people who are looking to hire, especially if you're looking at internships, will know that you have experience thinking in code right thinking in that kind of logic um what are some tips in getting internships projects right people want to see what you've done right even if it's small even if you just built a calculator in java people want to see that you put the work into getting projects done and i literally i can't value that anymore or i can't em emphasize that any more than i do uh build stuff you're going to be given if it's through college if it's through circuit stream if it's through YouTube tutorials, you're going to be given tools. It's what you do with the tools that count. Yeah, and a, another piece of advice I usually give to people as well is, um, you know, reach out to un companies and ask for internship opportunities. If, there, if there's nothing posted and you have a few companies, indie, large companies, whoever it may be, and, and you know, your dream is to try to, to get there and you feel like you've got a good enough, you know, knowledge base to, to start up applying, just apply, reach out to them. And, uh, you know, I know so many people who have found opportunities that weren't posted um, just through networking or through knowing someone or simply, you know, just reaching out and asking for an opportunity to be there. So um, that's another little thing that and I I'll, usually... Uh, I'll say this as well. Like I said, we're in the hiring process now and we have a job posted on LinkedIn. Um, I got so many messages, just like the one Tyler mentioned, where people were just like, hey, I'm not a multiplayer, you know, uh, uh, engineer, but do you happen to have a position open for blank or do you have an internship open for blank? And I don't, I happen that I, like, it happens that I do not have uh, a position for that because it's kind of just me running it. But if I did, right, why not look at the people that reach out? It's never, I, I would say it's never a bad thing. You might just get ignored, which will happen as cold messages do. Um, I particularly try to answer everyone while I can handle it, but you might get ignored. But you already have the no, right? You already have the negative response, which is by not reaching out. The worst thing that the worst thing that can happen by you reaching out is getting that no again 
or being ignored. Yeah. And like you said, Leo, like if you're going to be hiring for one of those roles that somebody reached out for, I mean, even now you can, you can probably imagine some of the things that people have said, you can remember little bits of the conversations or the messages that people yeah, sent to you sure. and those would stick in your mind. And, you know, it's just a way of kind of planting, planting a seed, you know, where you, where you want to be and it won't always work, but it, it does often work. So. Yeah. I had an artist reach out asking if I was, you know, hiring an or like position for the artist. And I looked at his portfolio and was really impressed. I just can't hire an artist right now, <laughs> but I, you know, like if I do need to, I will send it to my senior uh, director and be like, Hey, check this guy out. Right. So it doesn't hurt. Well, and likewise, if somebody else in the industry reached out and said, Hey, Leo, like, I'm just, I'm looking for a killer artist right now. Like, do you happen to know anybody? There's another yeah. really cool way for you to connect them through. Right. So you never know who will connect you. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I would say plant the seeds anywhere, anywhere you can. So, um, all right. In the career-specific side of the course, do we discuss finding uh, publishers and speaking on the idea of contracts? Um, I don't know if Wanai is still in the room here. Um, if Wanai is in here, maybe she can like lean in a little bit more and, and provide more details. Um, I don't want to speak about the specific career support unless I know exactly you know what's what's available there, Lanny. So I think the best thing for us to do would be to reach out to you, and um, I, I can get the career um, team to kind of reach out to you and provide more information there. Um, but I know, I know, you know, you work on resumes, you work on interview skills, um, you work on kind of how to put yourself out there. So I'm assuming we probably touch on, on everything here, but, um, Lanny, I'll, I'll let, um, when I reach out after the event here and, uh, we can, we can provide some more details on the career side for you there. Um, all right. Can you do, uh, oh, <laughs> the same one. Can you do both boot camps at the same time? Will it result in burnout? I'll just take this one off the screen because we we kind of just went through an answer on that one just a few minutes ago. Um, basically, to summarize it is, you know, according to Leah, how much time do you have? <laughs> if you've got the time to do it, and you've got the the dedication and the the will, um, then you know you can do it. But for most people, it would be more ideal to kind of find uh, what your where your interest lies, where you're you know what you're more interested in, if it's the coding or the design side, and then start there and take take one of those boot camps to start. And if I want to work in the States, are there recruiters coming to the demo event? Um, what is your advice? And um, if I want to get into the gaming industry in the States? Yeah, absolutely. Like a lot of our partners are Canadian. We have a lot of uh, partners in the US. Um, just, you know, thinking of one like Bungie. Bungie's a hiring partner of ours. They were in, they're in the US. Uh, Niantic comes to some of our events. They're US based. Um, there's lots, there's lots of companies. So um, absolutely, there'd be opportunity for you there. Um, when we're looking for um, recruiters to come into our events, uh, we're aware that most of our students are located um, in Canada and the US. And so we, we try and find hiring partners that would you know, be able to provide opportunities in, in both locations for them the best we can. So um, yeah, there'll, there'll be companies from both. I can't guarantee exactly who would be in every single pitch day. Um, you know, there's different companies that are available to attend them. And sometimes we you know, see the same companies come through, sometimes we don't. So um, yeah, it's, we do our best though. And there's definitely U S companies in our, our, um, portfolio of companies that we're connected with. So, all right, let me see. Oh, I think that was it. I think that was the last question there. Just going to take a quick peek at the chat log and make sure that we're not missing anything. Um, Jordan, we can reach out to you. Beautiful. Oh, when I is in the uh, chat here still, when I can see when I is typing, um, so in terms of the career question that we just had, if you stay tuned or, you know, pay attention to the chat for just a minute here, I think there'll probably be a response that's going to pop up for you. Um, but I'll otherwise, go and share my, oh, uh, good. LinkedIn profile. If anyone wants to connect with me and ask more questions that come up later, I'm always answering those. So feel free to, you know, reach out when you connect with me though, just make sure you send a quick note of like, I was in the info session, just so I know who you are. Um, yeah, that's it. Perfect. And then for my LinkedIn, I mean, you guys are welcome to add me as well. Uh, just search Tyler Trap and Circuit Stream, and you should be able to find my LinkedIn profile really, really quickly there. Um, and I don't know if when I had the chance to respond there. So um, if when I still typing the response, even after this session finishes, oh, there it is there. But I was going to say after this session finishes um, and I, I end the event, you, you guys are still welcome. I think you still have access in the in the room and you should still be able to see what the chat log says. So um, if, if you wanted to go back and review the, uh, the information there from when I, you can, um, but our, our program is career focused. Uh, so our curriculum does not cover publishers and getting contracts. 
However, there are opportunities uh, to network with alumni and various industry partners that could potentially help with those resources. So um, so hopefully that helps answer that question there. Thank you so much for when I for uh, quickly throwing the response in the chat there for us. And that's it. So thank you everyone uh, for joining the event today. Uh, stay tuned for our uh, next events that we will uh, host. Uh, you can check out Circuit Streams website. We'll always have the, uh, the upcoming events posted there. Um, if anybody has any questions about the courses or if we still have seats available for the upcoming cohorts, uh, just reach out to admissions at circuitstream.com and we will definitely get some information back there for you. But um, all that aside, Leo, huge thank you uh, to you joining again today and for you sharing all of your uh, information. Um, honestly, it's invaluable because you've, you're, you know, you've actually taken the course. So you can speak to the real world experience and, and let these guys know what it's going to be like uh, more than I can. So, so we appreciate you as always. And um, yeah, connect with us on LinkedIn, look for our next event and I'll, I'll leave it there. So thank you everyone uh, for joining us today. Have a fantastic Thursday and we look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers. Bye everybody.